Hi there, thanks for joining us. Tonight we'll be talking about why it is that you might not be getting the results that you want from some of your black and white images. Yes, so Michelle is going to show us uh, how to do this, how to accomplish the, a good black and white conversion. Yeah, so there are obviously several ways to go about really just about anything when it comes to post-processing in Lightroom or Photoshop. The primary ways that we see um, people going about the task of converting to black and white are either to take the saturation and just decrease it fully, which definitely accomplishes the goal of achieving a black and white image. However, using that method, you sort of steal from yourself the opportunity to have other freedoms when it comes to editing your, editing your image. So most notably, when you come down here to this panel in Lightroom and you want to do some adjustment of the hues, you can see those do nothing once you've taken out all the saturation. Obviously, saturation doesn't do anything at any level. And the luminance um, does a little bit, but not too much. So let's reset this guy. Second primary way that we see people using uh, the black and white option is to go up here and use the black and white button. Definitely works. It's definitely black and white. The problem is uh, most of the time it seems like uh, the job stops there and a lot of people don't even realize there are other options that can give you a lot more control over the finished outcome of your image. Yeah, they kind of call it done. Right. It's, it's black and white, done. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, that's what I thought too at a point in, white, in time. I mean, that's that, there's your black and white button right there, but you actually have so much more control over what you can do with your image once you have clicked the magical B and dub <laughs> button. So, um, for instance, in this particular picture, well, let's look at it in color one more time. Um, so you can see that the net overlay top that she's wearing is yellow. She's got um, sort of a halter style top here with some pinkish hearts on it. We've got some strong reds in her tattoo, pinkish in her lips. This uh, iris of the eye on the graffiti wall is a bluish teal color. So um, now that we've established the colors that we have in our photo, a lot of yellows, a lot of reds. Let's turn it back to black and white. And we'll start down here by going into our red zone and noticing what happens when we adjust the slider. So right. first of all, starting from zero in the center, of course always if you double click in the center of a slider, it's gonna take you back to zero. Um, if I want to remove some of the color of her lips, remove the color from the hearts on her shirt, and I can go pretty far and make it look a little odd. Mm -hmm. uh, likewise, you can go the other direction Understanding that when you use these sliders, it's going to affect any tones in your image that have uh, the red color in them. So I'm not isolating anything here. I'm impacting all red. Yeah, the whole picture. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, same goes. I can move my. Yeah. Don't ever. Um, please don't touch the orange slider on people's faces. At least don't <laughs> go too far. It's very unappealing. It's very Jersey Shore sort of situation <laughs> that most of us don't appreciate. Um, for this one, though, because as we saw, her mesh top is yellow. We have some choices that we can make there. We can push it down and make it look like it was maybe a darker color. Uh, we can push it up and give it a really um, glowy white look. Um, if we wanted that top to be really prominent, we might do that. Likewise, you can play around with the other colors as well. Um, of course, anything that's yellow is also going to be impacted by green. Um, if we use this slider, you can see what's happening to the iris back here on the wall. It, yeah, it becomes brighter. So yeah, everything yeah. you push to the right will take that color and make it mm -hmm. brighter simply. Okay. Yep. And then if you push it to the left, obviously decrease the intensity. You got it. You can see that uh, my magentas also impact the hearts on her shirt and the color of her lips. So, moral of the story tonight is um, unless the only thing you want to do is remove the color from your photo, decreasing saturation is probably not the way that you want to do that. And also, after you click the black and white button, just know that there are a lot of other things that you can do and that you have control of. Just depends on kind of what you want to emphasize and what you want to bring out of your shot. That's, yeah, that's very good. That's very good. And if this option, if you're not comfortable using the black and white mix, which I think is a good word, for explaining mm -hmm. w w what's happening here with those with those colors, 
if you didn't have the option, so let's say we go to uh, reset and we do the basic uh, saturation down and you're like, well, I want the um, uh, this eye to be, or yeah, this eye to be uh, brighter or whatever. Really, you can't select by color. So that means that you would have to do a local adjustment via a brush. Right. Which is going to work. So if I do like an exposure uh, with my brush and I want it to be lighter, so I'm going to increase the exposure here and I'm going to draw, then sure enough, yeah, yeah. that works. So you That's, can still do it. You still can do it. You can increase it, whatever. But it's a lot of work. And especially if you're going to do the same for the hearts or the whole... Um, net and all that that's going to take forever it's not even going to look very good unless you very specific yeah, and... I'm not that precise yeah. typically when I'm doing things yeah. like that so it really uh, the, 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 using the black and white uh, like Michelle said and play with your mix here is what's going to be correct that's going to be awesome very specific you target the colors and you can balance or create more pop and equalize uh, i remember i had a a, a shoot of uh, josh actually which i converted in black and white and the skin color uh, because of the the light the strobe i had uh, was a certain color and then it faded into another color which was really nice but converting to black and white, the transition wasn't very nice. Uh -huh. So I was able to take that tone, which I believe was in the orange, and then the other tone, which was more in the yellow, and I made them match, so then the transition became super smooth. Nice. It was awesome. Otherwise, I would have had to bring in to uh, photo editor or do it via brushes and all that. So that saved me a lot of time, and it was yeah. super natural just by playing with how much intensity you want out of the, the, the tones. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. That was a little trick. Yeah, no, that's a great point. I think that's one of those things that if you're not aware it can be done that way, you'll be really mad that no one told you you could do it that way <laughs> if you've been doing all that extra work um, on all your images. So, Well, thanks everyone for being with us tonight. Have a great night, and don't forget you can subscribe to our channel or leave us feedback on this video below. Thank you.